Hey there guys, Buddy here. So the three main fluvial landforms that are going to be created by deposition will be braided streams, natural levees and deltas. So what are braided streams? A braided stream is going to be a river channel that splits into several smaller interweaving channels separated by temporary islands or bars made of deposited sediment. Now these sediments can include things like your sand or your pebbles. So for a more simple explanation, a braided stream is basically going to form when your river is going to lay down all the sediment and that will block its own path which will cause your river to split into different smaller channels. So where are braided streams found? They're typically going to be found in your lower course of a river and they're going to be common in areas with a high sediment load because that's basically why a braided stream will form because of the high sediment load or because of the amount of sand or pebbles in that actual river. So how does a braided stream actually form? So firstly, you can have a seasonal river that's going to carry a large load of sediment. So that means that the river is basically going to carry a lot of sand, a lot of gravel and a lot of silt. Then during any low flow or a sudden drop in velocity, because remember this river is going to occur in the lower course and the lower course is going to have a very gentle gradient. So the river flow is definitely going to decrease. So once you get a sudden drop in the velocity, the river is then going to slow down. And once it slows down, it's going to deposit all of the material on the riverbed. So the material that we're talking about is going to be all your sand, your gravel and your silt. Now, as the deposition continues, it will then form small islands or small bars, obviously, as you can see in the diagram. Can you see those small islands? Those are going to form because of your continuous deposition, right? Now, the water will then be forced to split around your bars or islands and that is going to form your multiple shallow channels. Now, these smaller channels will be known as your distributaries. And obviously, over time, the channels are going to continuously shift, which will then create a braided appearance. Now, what are some characteristics of braided streams? They're going to consist of multiple interweaving channels that are going to be known as your distributaries. They are going to be separated by your temporary sand and gravel bars. They're going to be shallow, wide and constantly changing course. They are going to occur in rivers with high sediment load and variable flow. And they are often unstable and prone to flooding during your heavy rains. And obviously because of that, they are usually going to have low vegetation on the islands due to your constant reshaping. So now let's take a look at your natural levees. So natural levees are naturally raised embankments made of silt, sand and other fine sediments that form along the banks of a river channel due to repeated flooding and deposition. Now remember silt is going to be your very fine sand. Now where will your natural levees be found? They are typically going to be found in the lower course of a river and they are going to occur on either side of your main river channel. So how do these natural levees actually form? Now if you take a look at our diagram, you can see that before the flood, our riverbanks are not going to be very raised and the level of the water is going to be well below your riverbanks. So firstly, when a river floods, it's going to overflow its banks and it's going to spread across the floodplain. Now can you see how in the next diagram, the water level is well above your riverbanks? Now that is going to represent the phase during your flood. So as the water is going to leave the main channel, so as it's going to recede, remember when something is receding, it's moving away. It's going to lose energy and it's going to drop its heaviest sediment closest to the riverbank. Can you see how all the sediments are going to be dropped right there on either side of the floodplain? And that's going to be things like your silt and your sand. Now, you need to remember that the heaviest sediment is going to be deposited first, right? And your finer particles are then going to be carried further into the floodplain. And over time, this repeated process is then going to build up your raised ridges or embankments along the sides of the river. And these are going to be known as your natural levees. And that is what's going to raise the level of the river higher than that of the floodplain. So what are some characteristics of your natural levees? Firstly, your raised ridges are going to be made of your deposited material. Now, can you see how high those raised ridges actually are? Secondly, they're going to run parallel to your river channel. So that means it's going to run along your river banks. They are going to be usually higher and more pronounced than the surrounding floodplain. And this is exactly what I've been saying. Your coarser materials are going to be deposited closer to the river and your finer materials are going to settle further away. 
they are going to help confine the river to its channel during normal flow and they may fail or breach during your extreme floods. Now if you're looking at this diagram, can you see how your natural levees are going to keep your river in its main channel? Now we need to understand that even though these natural levees are going to keep your river in its main channel, that does not mean that during your extreme flooding, your river is not going to flood and break these natural levees because that can still happen. So let's look at some positive impacts of your natural levees. So they are going to reduce flooding during your normal or small floods by keeping the river in its main channel and in doing so, it will prevent the loss of crops due to flooding. Your natural levees can be used for agriculture because your fertile silt deposits support your crop growth and it will prevent fertile soils from washing back into the river. It's going to provide your natural protection to sediments close to rivers and it's going to serve as your natural flood control features in some areas. However, just as there are positive impacts to your natural levees, there are also negative impacts to your natural levees. So your natural levees can create a false sense of security, severe floods may overtop or break them. So your natural levees may cause water to drain poorly and that's going to lead to water logging behind your levees. And remember that your tributaries which will normally flow towards the mainstream, they are not going to be able to join now because the natural levees are going to be blocking it. So now these streams will now have to flow along the river. So that means that it will flow parallel to the river. Now once these natural levees are going to be breached, your flooding is going to be much more severe and sudden. Now let's take a quick look at your deltas. So what is a delta? A delta is a low-lying triangular or fan-shaped landform formed where a river deposits sediment as it flows into a standing body of water like an ocean, sea or lake. So where will these deltas actually be formed? They're going to be formed at the mouth of large rivers, especially in the lower course, and they can be common in coastal regions with gentle offshore gradients. So what are some conditions necessary for delta formation? So firstly, you're going to need to have a large load of sediment that's going to be carried by the river, right? Then you're going to need a low energy environment at the river mouth. So things like a calm sea or a calm lake. So when we're talking about a calm sea or a calm lake, we mean that the sea must have a very weak current. You are then going to need a shallow offshore gradient where your water does not wash sediment away quickly. So, so far we already identified that you need to have a large load of sediment in the river, you need to have a weak current in the ocean or river mouth, and your sea needs to be shallow. You then need to have slow moving water which will allow your sediment to settle. Remember, if you can have your fast moving water, it's going to constantly move the sediment up and down. It's not going to be able to have time to settle. There needs to be no strong tides or currents because that's going to remove your deposited material. And ideally, you need your vegetation like your reeds or mangroves to trap sediments and stabilize the area. So how does a delta actually form? So firstly, as your river is going to enter a standing body of water, its velocity is going to suddenly decrease. Now, I like to explain this in a certain way. Imagine you are running towards a group of people that are standing still. Once you reach the group of people, are you going to be able to continue running? Or will you have to slow down and move through them slowly in order to pass? Now, the answer to that is that you will need to slow down in order to pass. Now, that's the exact same thing as a river. Once your river is going to be moving and it's going to enter your standing body of water, remember a standing body of water is going to be water that's not going to be really moving, right? So once the river is going to enter this ocean or the sea, it's going to slow down very quickly, right? Its velocity is going to suddenly decrease. And this loss of energy is then going to cause the river to deposit its load. Now your heavy particles are going to settle first and your finer ones are going to be carried further out. So for those of you that will be wondering, why will your heavier particles settle first? Now we need to remember that when your river is going to enter the sea, the saline conditions of the sea are going to cause your fine clay particles to stick together, right? And this is going to make the particles much larger and much heavier. And that's what's going to cause it to sink. Now, when I say saline conditions, I'm talking about the presence of your high concentration of dissolved salts in your water. Because remember, your ocean is very salty. Now, once your particles are going to settle, the deposited material will then accumulate to form a delta. And the river is then going to split into several distributaries and that's going to spread water and sediment. Now over time, this is then going to build up new land in a triangular or a fan shape. 
Now remember when we're talking about a fan shape, we're not talking about the fan that you're going to find in your ceiling. We're talking about a hand fan. And this is going to form a delta. Now this delta will only survive if the ocean currents are not strong enough to remove the sediments. Because remember, if you're going to have a very strong current that's going to come through there, it's going to wash all these sediments away and your delta will no longer be there. So what are some characteristics of your deltas? Your deltas are going to have a network of distributaries and these are your small river branches. Your shape may be triangular, fan-shaped or a bird's foot. Although I don't really see a bird's foot, but I'm not too sure. Your deltas are going to be made up of your fine sediments, things like your silt and clay. And they're going to form in your low energy and your slow flowing environments. Now your deltas are often going to contain wetlands, marshes or mangrove swamps. And your deltas are going to be rich in biodiversity and they're going to be very fertile. So what are the positive impacts of your deltas? So your fertile soils from your silt deposits are excellent for farming. Farming things like rice and sugarcane. They are going to support your rich biodiversity, so things like fish, birds and plants. Your deltas are going to provide livelihoods. Examples would be through fishing, agriculture and tourism. Deltas will create natural buffer zones against storms and coastal flooding. And your deltas can become sites for harbors and urban development. Now what are the negative impacts of your deltas? Firstly, they're going to be prone to flooding, especially during your storms or heavy rains. Secondly, they can become swampy and difficult to build on. Thirdly, your salt water intrusion may damage your crops and fresh water supply. Pollution and industrial development can destroy ecosystems. Distributaries may change course, disrupting agriculture or settlements. And remember, because there's going to be standing water, mosquitoes are going to be attracted to this water and that can cause malaria. And that brings us to the end of today's journey through river landforms shaped by deposition. Now I want to thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. Now if you found that this video was useful, please don't forget to give the video a like. Please subscribe for more. Now if you have any questions or topics that you want me to cover next, please drop them in the comment section. I'll always read the comments and I will always reply. Thank you so much for watching. Stay cool, stay curious and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Thank you.